Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I've got a lawn tractor in the shop. It's almost brand new. It runs for a bit, then after a while it starts to sputter and it dies. So what I'll be doing is starting up the machine and I'll be going through the diagnostic process with you guys so you can see exactly what to do if you get the same problem. So what I mean by surging is that the engine is revving up and down. Now, some of the things you might want to check first is to make sure that your gas cap is venting. What you can do is loosen the cap, run it with the cap loose so the tank vents properly. Then you'll know if that's a problem or not. You can also change the air filter, make sure you've got good gas, make sure your fuel filter's clean, that you've got a good spark plug. Although the spark plug usually does not make an engine surge if it's not good. And the other thing you should check as well is the carburetor solenoid at the bottom here. I did check it, it does work. If you want to quickly see if it works or not, just turn the ignition key and listen for a clicking noise. I'll do that right now. So I can hear it clicking. So basically all the things I just mentioned here, I've already checked all that. What I'm going to do now is start up the engine. When it warms up, it starts to surge. It runs perfectly well when it's cold. It does not surge at all. And then I'll bring it back in the shop and I'll take the carburetor off. All right, let's start it up here. I'll let it run for a while. And as I mentioned, you will see that it does not surge when it's cold. she died. Let's try to start it up again. <laughs> Now this machine is auto choke or something like that side. There's no choke for me to put on. Now the first thing I'm going to do, even though I don't think it's a spark issue, I will check for spark because the machine's warm. Just plug your tester on the plug, the other lead inside the spark plug boot. Now let's turn it over and what you want to do is check for the light to come on. So I've got great spark. I didn't think it was a spark issue. You could try another spark plug, but most of the time when your engine surges, it is not a spark related issue. Now, another thing you can check while it's warm is to see if that solenoid still works. And basically I'm doing this before I take the carb apart. So if you're at home working on your tractor, this will be easy for you to check. Now I wanna check all these things here before I actually take the carb apart. So if you're doing this from home, these are all easy things you can do yourself, even if you're not a mechanic. So let's listen in for that solenoid to click. And she's clicking good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is take that carb off and I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. If you have a fuel shutoff valve, turn it off. If you don't have one, you can install one. If you don't have access to getting a fuel valve right away, you might want to get a container so when you remove the fuel line, you can pour the gas into that. So I'll start by removing the air filter cover. You just untwist these, pull the air filter out. Now I'm going to remove that Phillips screw right down here and the 10 millimeter bolt right here. And there's a spacer like this that goes between this part here and the engine. Now there's two 10 millimeter nuts, one here and one on the other side. This one's easy to get at here. For the other one here, I'll use an extension. Okay. 
You can disconnect this hose over here. It's just a breather hose from the fuel tank. Get your fuel line out of here. Now I forgot there's another 10 mil bolt under here. You could push the cover and get it off, but I'm just going to remove the whole cowling here. So there's three nuts here. And you also need to remove this bolt here because it's holding the front of the cowling. And again, it's all 10 millimeters. Now you can lift the cowling. It's going to be a lot easier to access that bolt. Now this carb should come off a lot easier. And I'll disconnect this breather tube right here. Now to disconnect the choke arm, you need to move this little white retaining clip here, just away from the linkage. And then you can just pop it up. Now there's a gasket that goes here, just remember that. Now I'm going to disconnect that solenoid and you can do that by unplugging the two wires here. And don't worry because they only go in one way, you cannot mix them up after. Now you might have to peel the tabs a little bit here so it comes off. There we go. Now it's the first time I get one of these tractors with this engine in the shop to do carb work. So the best way actually to remove this carb is to just remove the two 10 mil bolts right here. This will allow you to get the linkage off properly without damaging it. And also this bolt here. I'm just going to put the bolts back on just so I don't mix them up later on. Now the fuel line can be removed. First you have to undo this clip. And then undo the linkage just by twisting the carb like I did. And now the entire carb is off the tractor. Now, since this carburetor came out of an MTD made product, and you guys have seen my previous video on how there was a small screen between the connector and the carb, this is the first thing that I'm itching to check on this carburetor. Now, once you get the carb off, you can remove this and the choke linkage. It'll make it easier to work on it. And I'm just going to hold it, put the vice grips on, And guess what guys, there is a screen. Just like on the MTD snowblowers with the Powermore engines, it's totally plugged in there. Now you can remove the screen with a pick if you want. What I'm going to do today is basically just take the bowl off and clean it from the inside. And to do that, I'll remove the 14 mil bowl nut over here. Now when you take your carb off, there will be a bit of fuel left in it so you can put it on a rag. And you also want to take note of the location or how the bowl is positioned so that you put it back on the same way. So there's quite a bit of fuel left in there. So I'm just going to unscrew that. And I'll bet you that the inside of that carburetor is clean. That's what I expected. So if you take a carb apart like this and it's clean and you don't know about the little screen, it can really stump you. Now you'll need to remove the float and the needle valve. So what I'm going to do now is blow a bit of air through the needle valve hole. It is connected to where the screen is or the fuel inlet and you hardly need any pressure to clear out the dirt from the screen. And by the way, guys, you don't need that screen in there. You can completely remove it if you want and just add an extra fuel filter. And just make sure you wear your safety glasses when you do this. And here we go. So just keep an eye on this side of the carb. You're going to see that dirt go flying. And I'm going to add very little air pressure. Here we go. And you can actually see the small screen in there. It's pretty clean. And I've actually blown it out. And you know what, guys? I'm leaving it that way. I'm not putting it back on with the screen. 
Now, if you did want a little screen back in there, you can get one from a two-stroke carburetor kit, like a K10 watt. By the way, I looked on the parts list and they do not show this small screen, so you can't buy it from MTD. Then what you would do is just put it right here and insert it right in there with a drill bit. And it's also a good idea to clean the fuel inlet as well. Just do the same thing. And now to reinstall the inlet, just use the vice grips again. I like to put some Loctite 680 on there. It's not necessary, but I just like to do it as a precaution. Make sure you don't get the sealant inside the inlet here. And I'm going to reinstall it in the same position that it was. If you don't take note of that, the connector won't line up with your fuel line. Now I'm going to put all the parts back on. Now the needle valve is stuck on the float, which is good. Just line it back in here. Now I'll just line it all up. Push that pin in. Now this is the position that the ball was in. Just slap it on and you want to check the bottom ball nut and jet here to make sure that it's clean. And then just tighten it up. Don't go too tight. And now the carb's completely back together. Okay, so at this point here, I'm just going to insert this back on the carb here. And you can also put the choke cleaver on now if you want. This is how it goes. Now the very first thing I'm going to do for the reinstallation is reinstall the throttle linkage. You want to insert the bent part of the linkage right into the carb here and then just move the carb straight up. And then you want to reconnect that little spring to the tiny hole here. Now you can put your choke linkage in here right now if you want and turn the white tab to lock it in. And I'll get these bolts in. And now just tighten them up by hand. I don't have the torque specs, guys. It's not brain surgery, just use common sense. So you want them fairly tight here, guys. Now these single cylinder engines do vibrate a lot, so just keep that in mind. And a double check here. And now I'm just going to reconnect these wires here. And again, they only go in one way, so you cannot mix them up. Just tuck them behind here. And now you want to get the fuel line reconnected. And now what you want to do is just squeeze that clip and push it back. You want it over the connector. And there it is down here. I'll just have another quick look to make sure everything's on properly before I put the air filter bracket or holder here. Check the auto choke linkage. This is the throttle linkage, the wires are on, the fuel line's on. Now there's a gasket that goes here. This is exactly how it goes on. The crankcase vent tube. And now what you want to do is get it on the studs. And you can start these two 10 millimeter nuts. And the other one goes right on the other side here. And there's a bolt that goes right here. And don't forget to tighten up the Phillips screw here. And I'll basically just go around finishing up the tightening of all these bolts. Now reconnect the fuel tank vent line right here and you can reinstall the air filter. Okay, let's stick the shroud back on. Just line everything up here and stick these three nuts back on. And just tighten them on fairly tight. 
And don't forget the bolt at the front here either. And last but not least, don't forget the air filter cover. Now here's a dilemma that I have guys. There is no screen in the tank to stop the dirt on lawn tractors. It only has this fuel filter here and then these carbs had a screen like you saw that I removed. Obviously if dirt's getting in there it means that this filter is not stopping all the dirt. My dilemma is that this little fuel filter here has a screen inside of it. It's mostly recommended for lawn tractors without a fuel pump. This one does not have a fuel pump. However, these filters here, which have like a cardboard cartridge, they filter out way more dirt than these little red filters here. However, they're designed for lawn tractors with a fuel pump. But what I'm going to do in this case, even though it's a filter for a tractor with a fuel pump, I will put it on this tractor. These are awesome filters. They're Oregon part number 07103. I've had really good luck with these filters, even on tractors without a fuel pump. So I normally don't do this, but I will do it in this case because there's so much dirt getting caught right at the carb. So it's really easy replacing a fuel filter. All you have to do is get the clamps off here. Now there is an arrow for the fuel flow on this filter. There it is. The arrow's there to show you to install it where the fuel comes in and out this side. And just do the same on this side. Now when I turn the fuel valve on, you should see the filter fill up. And that's good. So now I'm gonna take the tractor outside. I'm gonna let it run for a good five to 10 minutes, approximately what it used to take for it to start surging. And there's no way that this engine will be surging now. Okay, let's start this baby up. Alright guys, so that did the trick. That engine runs smoothly. I did let it run for about 15 to 20 minutes outside here total and the engine did not even surge one bit. Anyway, it just goes to show a simple screen like that will cause so many problems and like I said earlier, that little screen does not even come up on the parts list. Now, so far I've only seen those screens on MTD products on the Powermore engines. I have not seen them on Briggs and other engines that I work on here in the shop. So I would only worry about it if you have a Powermore engine on your lawn tractor. So if my video has helped you today, guys, please thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. Check out all my videos. I've got over a thousand videos on YouTube and I'm sure there's a video out there to help you fix whatever equipment you have. Thanks again for watching and make sure you're following me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the links are below the video. Have a great day, guys.